So when we look at the molecular geometry for the NO3- molecule, there's two ways we can do this. The first way is to look at the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So what we're looking at is the valence shell, the electrons around the atoms, those pairs of electrons, how they're going to push away or repel each other. So we would anticipate using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory that those oxygen atoms would spread out in a plane and they'd be as far away from each other as they could. So that's the first way and that kind of helps us get a qualitative sense of what's going on there. We could also use the AXN notation to figure out the molecular geometry. Here A is the central nitrogen. We have one of those. X, that's the number of atoms bonded to this central nitrogen. We have one, two, three oxygens bonded to it. N, that's the number of non-bonded electron pairs on that nitrogen. Well, we don't have any non-bonded electron pairs, so we're not going to worry about this. So that gives us AX3. We could have memorized that AX3 is trigonal planar, but we can also, if we're allowed to, look it up on a table. So as we go down our table, we have AX2, and right there is AX3, which is trigonal planar and has bond angles of 120 degrees. So this is what a trigonal planar molecule would look like in three dimensions. You can see that it's flat and that those atoms are spread out as far away as they can from each other in that plane. Note that the bond angle is 120 degrees, as we saw in the table, for this trigonal planar molecule. So that's the molecular geometry or a shape for the NO3 minus ion. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.